What stunt did your D&D players pull that completely derailed the campaign? Part 2. I have a player who is really good at this. For him, a big part of the fun of role-playing is coming up with a really interesting, usually warrior, concept and finding the magical min-max of abilities, quirks, feats, advantages, disadvantages, pick your system, GURPS, WOW, etc. Whatever it was, he'd find a combination of abilities that were technically legal because basically he wanted to be the biggest badass that walked into any room. This was in the GURPS system. A particularly brutal system, honestly. I mean, fights are not against 500 hit point monsters. Fights can be over in two turns. So, here was the GM's conundrum. His character, the way he was built, was an epic swordsman. A creature of legend, someone whose skill would be sung for years to come. Someone with such a concentration of stats and skills that it was as if he was bred to be a warrior. And, in fact, that was the background we came up with for his people. Warriors without peer. A dying race of which he was one of the few remaining members. But, for a character that impressive, for him to actually be impressive, you can't just throw giants and dragons and everything else at him right at the beginning of the story. His abilities were exceptional, and some part of my mind felt like he deserved to feel like he was exceptional. He'd put work into the character. He was more than just a min-maxer, to be clear. He was very much into the personality and history of his character. Would draw very impressive pictures of him during our sessions. But for all of that, he was very clear with me. No cheating. No cheating on dice rolls. If he was going to die because of someone's attack, he didn't want me saving him. He wanted to die. He wanted to feel the real risk of life and death. But how do you do that when your player is so damned powerful? Eventually, I crafted an assassin who was hired to take him out. Nothing personnel, kid, but this was an assassin with exceptional experience. Characters in GURPS are built according to a profile. So, I added an extra 150 points to this assassin beyond the points of my friend's sheet. As you level up, your points total increases, so in theory, balancing this should be easy, right? Him and the assassin met for a duel, because I was pretty confident that this was going to be a fight for the ages, and the assassin was so badass. Like I was literally worried I was about to kill my friend's character, that I basically portrayed it like the assassin had been killing people for years. But for someone who might actually give him a challenge, who was a master swordsman, it would be a violation of his honor to kill him in his sleep. He would give him the chance of a fair fight. Even though he was an assassin, he still had that curious quirk of honor. So, I was prepared for an epic fight. You can probably tell from my setup, it wasn't. They faced each other, exchanged words, drew blades. The assassin got off a single attack that was parried. Then, my friend made his rolls and cut him in half. I played it straight. He wanted me to play it straight. No cheating. He cut that son of a bitch in half in a single turn. I struggled for several sessions to truly give this guy a real challenge. But he was a freaking machine. I kept increasing the number of foes, gave them advantages, allies, stacked the deck every way I could to make things a little more scary. And he'd just go head first into the fray and destroy everything. Seriously, he was unstoppable. In the end, I had him meet up with a force of some dark knights I'd created, and this guy was about 750 points. A knight of great power, carrying a huge two-handed cleaver. I just wanted him to be intimidating. The Dark Knight demanded something. But of course, my friend does not back down. My friend does not get intimidated, and his warrior had yet to face any real threat, despite my increasingly escalating attempts to do so. So he basically insulted the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight gave him a single chance to take it back, and he said no. The Dark Knight outnumbered him by 500 points. That 
was finally enough. In a single turn, the Dark Knight easily parried his attack and cut off his leg. Hey, I played it straight. He wanted it. But I still felt guilty, and the player was quite shocked to say the least. Later on, I found better ways to challenge the characters and magic became more common in our fights. It was the only thing he couldn't easily overcome unless I absolutely crushed him with an opponent three times more powerful than he was. Lessons learned. It was a friend of mine running his very first campaign. He had the pleasure, or possibly the horror, of finding himself GMing for Adventuring Party PLC. They listened to the story of the Lich in the Dungeon. Then they immediately went out to speak to some rich local merchants. They offered him a share in the future profits of their upcoming adventure in exchange for some investment to get better gear. They didn't use the money for gear. They used some of it to buy the land containing the dungeon. Then they paid builders to block off all entrances except for one. That one they entered cautiously. They cleared the first room of its weak monster, then they set about sweeping the room, laying carpet, installing oil lamps, and generally making it pleasant. They installed a lock on the entrance to the rest of the dungeon and built a small reception room. This was when they decided to advertise their dungeon and charge wannabe adventurers a small fee to attempt to get as far as they could through the dungeon. They would keep a percentage of treasure gained, of course. As the other adventurers tried and died, the party slowly followed them, carefully examining every room inch by inch over many days, stripping it and bricking off corridors as the adventurer progressed gradually through the dungeon. Finally, a hapless adventurer discovered the final room, a room full of treasure and magic items guarded by a terrifying high-level lich. Aha, thought the players. They walled up the room and had it excavated. Then they sold it on the open market, room with treasure plus lich. They even got a wand to prove how much treasure there was inside it. Now, finally, they had some safe prime real estate, already partially developed. Anyone want to buy? My friend did a great job of rolling with it, as his players spent IC equivalent of a year carefully milking the adventure for money and never once risking themselves. They had a lot of fun, so I would count that as successful, if somewhat unexpected. We played The Dark Eye, a low magic setting in the classic fantasy world. There was your traditional knight, a goblin sorcerer, and a cleric of a thief god. They really wanted a magic item, even though I said that they do not fit to the campaign we were playing. I handed them the Straf des Galafan Morlhein. Uh, I probably butchered that, but I'm sorry. Punishment of Fallen Swamp Corpses. That's kind of cool. A dagger that deals plus one damage to noblemen at full moon in a swamp or bog. Holy fuck, that's really cool. The biggest mistake I could make. They left the quest they were on and kidnapped the only nobleman they'd met, the father of their quest giver, a young woman who needed them to examine the disappearance of a merchant party, but was luckily too far away. Then they brought that nobleman to the nearest bog, which was a journey over 380 kilometers through a dangerous forest, a goblin ridden mountain pass and over a wild river. Finally, they set camp for 17 days, waiting for full moon. And then they stabbed the nobleman with the dagger, dealing a single point of damage more. The actual journey took two full evenings and was quite fun. And afterwards, we restructured our game to make it more fulfilling for our players, as well as me. A player, not the DM, but I have one or two stories. Let me tell you the story that resulted in a country being created. So, we were playing a campaign set in a world that was basically a normal fantasy world, but in addition to normal fantasy stuff, muskets were common in some armies as ranged weapons, replacing bows and crossbows, but not replacing swords, magic, and so forth. We were just doing normal murder hobo stuff, take quest, finish quest, loot everything, celebrate in the tavern, go to the next town, etc. 
until we reach this walled desert village. Now, the only things worth mentioning about this town was that it was the next stop on the road in the vague story the DM had going, and that the head guard was corrupt. He demanded a bribe to be let in, and he was a total ass about it. This annoyed me. <laughs> it's so blunt. This annoyed me, so I demanded we be let in for free. He refused. Keep in mind here that this guy was up on a wall above the gate while we were arguing. After talking failed, I naturally decided to use violence, so I told the party's rogue to throw a knife right past his head to scare him. <laughs> Unfortunately, the knife grazed him, so he called for reinforcements and ran. At this point, I ordered our party's orc barbarian to bash down the gate while the rest of us shot at the guards on the wall. We only killed a few guards before the gate was breached and the guards were literally scared shitless. Seeing their fear, I told the guards to give us their corrupt and cowardly leader. They promptly threw him <laughs> over the wall and surrendered. After letting the orc kill him, good job, the DM took this opportunity to reveal that the ring I looted in our last quest was cursed and made me want to conquer and rule. It wasn't that strong, so uh, it wasn't a problem until circumstances triggered it, but I did fail the will save to resist it. We then brought freedom to the village by freeing the slaves in the silver mine and forming an elected city council with an elected mayor. Problem. Medieval serfs apparently have no idea how to rule themselves, so they asked us to stay and rule. My character, who was a former soldier by the way, tried to give the village and its land to his king and wash his hands of the matter after the ring wore off, but the king refused. The sultan's terms were surrender and be executed, so that was not an option either. So we stayed and I became royalty. We then needed to conquer more land and secure a food supply and a harbor for trade, and since strategy games are my forte, there was no way we would lose since our DM won't cheat. All of this because I didn't want to pay a gate toll. And that is how the story of how I founded an empire in D&D and completely and utterly derailed the campaign. I had the players on an airship heading towards a distant city. They were passing over a dense forest when... They were attacked by the bad guys that had acquired griffin mounts. The plan was to cause significant damage to the airship, have it crash in the forest, and the rest of my well-planned campaign would continue on. However, one of the characters, a goliath barbarian, wanted to jump off the airship and onto a griffin and hurl its rider to the forest hundreds of feet below. I told him very sternly, Are you absolutely sure you want to do this? I don't have a backup plan for you if you fail. If you fail on your athletics check or the handle animal check, you will fall to the ground and die. Be absolutely sure you want to do this. He said, Oh, I understand. Let's do this. He ran and leapt from the airship. And, as is usually the case in D&D with these ridiculous situations, he rolled a nat 20. Unfreaking believable You land on the griffin and dislodge the rider. Roll to control the griffin. Roll passed by a mile! He now has a griffin mount. Another player, inspired by this, attempts to bring down a griffin and its rider when it passes over the airship. He does, makes the check by a mile. He now has a griffin too. Well, damn. They defeat the rest of the airborne adversaries and save the ship. Conveniently, for my plot anyway, the big bad guy they weren't supposed to encounter until later appears and damages the airship just enough to cripple it, causing it to crash onto the forest as intended, albeit not nearly as harrowing as all of the players were saved from the falling ship by the two new Griffin mounts. Lame! <laughs>